Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Church. If we have any uh, guests with us today, please sign the guest books at the back of the sanctuary as you leave. And if you have smaller kids, we have a nursery down the hall here. here. And do join us after the service for refreshments and fellowship down Jory Hall. If you need the elevator, ask anyone. They'll uh, be able to help you with that. A few announcements that we need to talk, to, uh, talk about. One is next Saturday, this coming Saturday, the uh, annual meeting in Jory Hall, as they've been doing for the last few years now. And it starts at 5 with a potluck. And uh, do make sure you attend because it's important to your congregation and to the community what we do here at Trinity. So if you have your two cents worth you want to put in, then is the time to do it. And today, as you've noticed, we have uh, a bit of a, some extra equipment there. We apparently will be online today. Don't worry about your hair. You're only going to be taken from the back, not from the front. So. You'll be okay. And the Jane Act needs assessment committee for a new minister. If you have any ideas of, uh, there's uh, questionnaires, questions on the board down there on sheets. Just write down your comments so they know what it is you're looking for. Next Sunday is Donation Sunday. We didn't have a list for February, but the uh, one for January is still there, so they'll give you a rough idea what to bring. And in December, somebody lost a camera in the kitchen. If you know who that is, or if yourself, just speak with Gene or call the office. Because if you don't, and Ralph gets a hold of that, you know what's going to happen to it. <laughs> uh, purchase cards order. Uh, I believe today is the last day. Today is the last day. And speak to Allison about this if you get your card for next week. And the rest of the announcement I'll leave to your uh, leisure time to look at and uh, make sure you do look at them. There's a lot of interesting things happening. And one big announcement that I shouldn't be forgetting is today is Aiden Tome's birthday. Did I pronounce that right? I don't know, I hold it. Oh, we go. You, happy birthday to As the candle is lit, prepare to worship and focus your hearts and minds on God.
This is the place of worship and of praise. We are glad to be here. These are the friends who are with us in joy and sorrow. We this is the faith community through which compassion and justice become possible. This is the good news that Jesus proclaimed in deed and in word. So let us pray. Let the mountains hear our voices raised in prayer. First reading this morning is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. It can be found in the Pew Bible on page 1063. What God Requires. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent, you before you, and I sent before you Moses. Aaron and Miriam. 
O my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Sinam to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12, also found in your pew Bible on page 1115. Blessings from God. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reveal you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. We open our hearts to you, O God, and ask that between the words and in the middle of sentences and in times when our mind wanders, you'll bless us with insights and wisdom and direction for the living of our lives. Amen. When we were away uh, this past few weeks, we discovered a new people. Uh, we didn't go to any exotic locations. We were in South Carolina and went on a tour Gullah Tours. The man who led the tour was a, air, a retired Air Force pilot uh, who had moved back home at the end of his career and had taken up a job as a tour guide and bus driver. Took us all over Hilton Head Island uh, which until the 60s was only a backwater with a ferry that uh, allowed school buses and a few folks who were shipping produce to go back and forth. And he introduced us to his community, Gullah community, black Africans who've been in the eastern coastal plains of the U.S., 
for hundreds of years. Some slaves, some freed slaves, and they've kept their own language and culture. They're recognized as a separate language group. Uh, Gullah, it's thought, may come from the word Angola, which may be where they've come from. That may be an acknowledgement of centuries-old memory of home. But we met the Gullah people through his experienced voice and saw a community that behind the development and the golf courses and the condos and the strip malls in communities continued to look after one another, continued to care for one another. A community of folks who made sure that kids got looked after, that made sure that uh, God got worshipped. One of the, uh, one of the uh, distinct features of the community was that in each of the little villages where people lived, there was a worship place. Sometimes it was hardly larger than a barn or a garage, but people would come together because transportation around the island was difficult. People would come together with their friends and neighbors who were near at hand and worship God. Lively, celebrative worship, lots of singing, uh, an invitation to trust in God. What we met were, was, in uh, Tom Bandy's words, a distinct subculture. A subculture that was not like all the others around it. A community that was distinct and special and uh, lively. As we learned about them, we, the group that we were with had kind of settled into a sense of wasn't it good to meet these people? Wasn't it fine to recognize and uh, discover this whole community that we hadn't even noticed? When you look out over the landscape of the American South, that's not one of the images that comes to your minds or to our minds. Jesus offers blessings. To the poor, the meek, peacemakers, the ones who are persecuted, the ones who are reviled. What is the blessing? Well, if you read the Good News Bible, the word blessing means happy, or it's translated as happy. Those folks are happy. I'm not sure that's an adequate understanding of what's going on with those folks that Jesus describes. I wonder if the sense, though, that we do need is that those are people who, in some part of their being, experience God with them. So they're able to rest, breathe. Peace might be another language that we would use for blessed. There are people who are invited to rest, to relax. That whole community, meek, poor, peacemakers, reviled, might just let me invite you, include the whole crowd that gathered in front of Jesus. In the uh, Monty Python movie, The Life of Brian, the crowd that gathered around Jesus was so distant that people couldn't always hear what they were saying. And as people said, well, what did he say? What did he say? One of the famous lines is that uh, the report back is, blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> but I want to invite that that's a way of seeing the story, that Jesus' words were meant to encompass the whole community that was gathered in front of them. You who are gathered here 
in front of Jesus were the ones who heard the blessings. And your ears perked up. Mourn. Yeah, I'm aware of death in my life and of things missed and opportunities gone. I know about mourning. I know about poverty, whether it's in my own pockets or whether it's in my family story or whether it's in my awareness that poverty is more than just money and it's got to do sometimes our failure to care for our community or poverty just as sometimes as uh, Barclay said in his commentary and you can read it in your pew Bibles Barclay says poverty is realizing that we haven't got anything to offer into God's economy and yet that God loves us so Jesus spoke to the whole crowd and one by one went around and named people for who they were and what their burdens were and said, Blessed, promise for you, for everyone. Hmm. And blessed, turn the language around, not because you did those things, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall obtain. That's the wrong formula. And I don't know if I don't know what the translation goes, but it only makes sense if we realize that the blessing comes in the doing. You're not blessed as as that person and there's something that comes in the future blessed are for it's going to happen no blessed right now because you are a peacemaker because you are meek because you are poor because you're open to God's invitation you are blessed in the right here and now and there's a future blessing now and in the future God's promise is to be with us to touch us, to bless us, to care for us, to make us happy, to enliven our lives. We're invited to know that God's blessing is for each one of us. And so today, God might look out over us and say, Jesus might say today, blessed is the little girl who goes to the teacher and says, Johnny's beating up on me. Out in the hall and nobody notices it. Say, bless it. Blessed. The young girl who says to her boyfriend, no and means it and gets her point across blessed she discovers integrity she discovers appropriate boundaries blessed the young couple who get on a bus and head off to Toronto to be part of a protest against the economy and the powers that be that take from the poor and put it into the pockets of those who are already rich. Blessed. Blessed is the couple who, although distance has grown between them, continue to look for ways to make things whole again, to build things back together again. Blessed. Blessed are the ones who alone, even in a community and a nursing home, aware of the losses and the things that have changed and the life that used to be and now isn't. Blessed. Jesus' invitation is that each of us see that in this new thing that Jesus is announcing, God's Generosity is bigger than we imagined. And that God's generosity, His blessing, is offered more freely 
than we could ever guess. We're folks who in our lives some of the time see ourselves as broken, as alienated, as separated from what makes us happy and gives us peace. Jesus invites that turning ourselves to God puts us in touch with a resource, with a gift, with a promise that's going to make our lives different. Blessed are. Realizing our failure, our weakness, our vulnerability, we have access to a power, a source that will fill us with possibility. Blessed are. The invitation that Jesus makes, when you're reviled, when you're poor, when you're meek, you're part of a community that goes back through the centuries that God has faithfully responded to. When you're caring about the world, trying to make a difference, speaking out for justice, walking humbly with God, even the mountains remember. Micah's promise, God's got a complaint against you, against us. The complaint is that we've tried to walk as if God's not part of us. And the invitation, what does God require? God requires that we do justice. We care that we walk kindly, that we are humble in our travels in our world, and discovering those invitations, finding God who reaches out to us, we are blessed. promise from God to each of us at our loneliest, at our least confident of our frightened state, God comes to us and offers a blessing. And each one of us find our lives filled with hope and possibility we become strong in hope. We can trust in the future. We can know of a certainty that God's love is with us. Thanks be to God.
Now let us join in prayer. We come before God to give thanks for God's blessings in our lives, for God's promise. We also come bearing the burdens of friends and family and neighbors and our own lives. We pray for others and for ourselves. We give you thanks, O loving God, that we can gather and praise you and offer our prayers. We give you thanks for your promise that you are with us in our anxious and troubled times. We give you thanks that you hear our prayers for our world, for troubled places, for places of violence and unrest, for people of, for places of injustice and inequality. We pray, O oh God, for particular places. We pray for the people of North Korea. We pray for the people of Afghanistan. We pray for the people of South Africa. Congo, North Africa. We pray for the people who are affected by harsh weather in southern states or drought in California. We pray for people who are still putting together the pieces of their lives after floods and earthquakes fire, and disease. We offer our bundle of prayers and worries and concerns for the world around us and trust them into your keeping as we commit our lives to making the world a safer, warmer, more blessed place. We pray for our own community here in Beamsville that you'll be with those who are recovering from surgery, that you'll be with those who are waiting for the results of tests, that you'll be with those who are anxious about what the future holds, We pray that you'll be with those who have difficult decisions to make, who are depressed and worried, who are on the edge of being launched. We pray, O oh God, for our church community we move towards our annual meeting, we pray that we'll discover how to be a strong and caring community for those of us who live and work here, but also for the world and community around us. Oh God, we offer our prayers for ourselves. Help us to inherit that mantle that Jesus Christ always already offered to us. Help us to become the peacemakers, the wonder givers, the courage offerers, the change makers. Help us, O oh God, to be disciples, servants, blessers. We offer, O oh God, 
our thanks and praise that we can come and share our prayer and trust in your response and your love. For we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, friend and brother, the one in whom we find our direction, our wisdom, our way. Amen. We continue to respond to God's love, offering our tithes and offerings. Our money makes a difference in our world, the way in which we offer justice and peace to the broken. We give out of our bounty. Thanks be to God. Marvel at the bounty of your gifts to us, O oh God, and we respond with these our gifts. We find blessing in the receiving 
and in the giving. Amen. Are you guys chained? Are you guys slaves? Yeah. <laughs> are you? They, we Ooh. are. We're all chained together. And what do the chains remind us of? Slaves. And which people were the slaves? The black people. The black and the brown people? The, some of the black and the brown people, that's right, were, were made into slaves. And did they have a really great life? No, no. What were some of the terrible things that happened to slaves? They were sad. They were sad, yeah, they were. What else? What other things? They all got chained up together. Sometimes they all got chained up together. So all kinds of terrible things happened. And we were talking about, like, well, maybe sometimes it sounds pretty awful to be a slave, and those kinds of times, somebody might stop believing in God and stop, stop believing in God's love. But did they? Did those slave people, did they stop believing in God and God's love? No, they did not. So what did they do? How did they, how did they manage to hold on to their faith? How did they manage? They started believing more, and then they finally broke out of the chains. They broke their chains, maybe not physically, but they broke their emotional chains. And how did they do that? What helped them to break their chains? God's love. God's love. So go ahead, break them. Break your chains. OK, oh. awesome job. Excellent. <laughs> and when they broke their chains, OK, get, get the ones that have the writing on. And when they broke their chains, 
Can I just take that one for a sec? We discovered that the people who were meek, what does this one say? What, what did they get? They got the earth. They got the whole earth. They did. And the people who were sad, what did they get? Uh, comfort. Somebody else got one? And the people who had to put up with people who were being mean to them, what did they get? What's that word over there? Does anybody remember? Heaven. Reward in heaven. They got a reward in heaven, which was awesome. And what else? The people who were merciful... They got mercy back. Excellent. The people who suffered, they got the kingdom of heaven as well. The people who were peacemakers, what did they get, Aiden? Called God's children. They got called God's special children. And it's really appropriate that Aiden has this particular link in the chain today. Because Aiden got an award at school this week for caring, because Aiden stands up against bullies at school all the time. So for Aiden to get the peacemaker one is very appropriate. Yeah, we're very proud of Aiden for that. And there's one that says, people who are the pure in heart. Now, but we thought, we talked about this, because pure in heart sounds like a good thing. Because some of these things sound kind of bad. You're hungry, you're sad. But why? To the peacemakers and the pure of heart, why do they need, need something special from God? Because they believe in him. Because they believe in him? Yeah, why else? Is it always an easy job being a peacemaker there, Aiden? No, it's not. So Aiden was telling us it's not always easy to be a peacemaker, and so we need some, some encouragement from God too. And the, pe the pure in heart and the peacemakers are told that they will see God. So those are all the wonderful things that will happen when we break our chains. Okay, so you can go and show your chains and I your copy like of the Beatitudes to the choir. Okay. All the chains are going at the front. Okay. Coming down? Careful.
So now we go into God's world, receiving a blessing, promising to be a blessing, offering gifts as a response to love offered and shared. May love of God, grace of Christ, fellowship of spirit rest with us, remain with us now and always. Amen. Thank you.